Yeah, first of all, your, your comments on uh, Kid getting a contract extension this morning. Oh, my biggest congrats to him. I mean, you know, obviously well deserved. One of the, I would say, best coaches this year from what I've been seeing. Just, you know, real poise. He knows how to really assert himself, assert the dominance in the locker room when it comes to whenever we need to get our heads on straight. But in all honesty, you know, just biggest congrats to him. You know, like I said, well deserved. You know, something I'm pretty sure he's been working towards for the longest. You know, I can't wait for what's next for the team, most definitely. What are some of the ways that he has helped you become a better player? In all honesty, just, you know, really just, I would say, trying to give me as much confidence as he possibly can at the end of the day. You know, there's times where, you know, I've shown a lot of frustration and shown my feelings on my sleeve out on the court. At the end of the day, you know, I got teammates that, you know, that always push me to try to get get myself out of the funk, but he does the same thing, too. And he tells me just keep going, keep doing the things that I'm doing on an elite level and just kind of be consistent with it. So that's some of the main thing, you know, it's pretty much the best advice he can give me at this point right now. As, as someone who's going to be matched up against, uh, the, you know, uh, Chet, you know, mm -hmm. what are the differences going against him versus going against Zubats? Well, Chet, he stretches the floor a lot more. You know, he's a... Uh, more dynamic guys, Zubak, he was more of a back to the basket, bang, bang, bang under the basket. So for sure, I'm going to be saving just some of the upper body and stuff <laughs> this uh, round for sure, because just with the last series, it was just, you know, the physicality was through the roof. And I know for a fact it's not going to be any different with this team. You know, they're a young, scrappy team, so we just got to come out prepared. In all honesty. You, you had big games when, you know, two times you guys played the Thunder mm -hmm. after, after the trade deadline. What mm -hmm. do you remember about playing in those games and, and how you were successful and just about how – you know, the team was successful overall. Uh, I tried to forget the second one because I missed my uh, Will Chamberlain record. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> in all honesty, in all honesty, you know, I just just go out and just do my job at the end of the day, you know, with as much attention and I would say gravity that Luca and Kyrie pulls towards them. It just kind of like opens the floor up for anybody out there. At the end of the day, it's going to be, I would say it's going to be a real good series for the bigs to just go out and just kind of like set the tone physically. Because once we set the tone physically, I feel like we'll be in, in a good place for sure. And let's be honest, you got fouled on that that one that broke the record. Ah, man, I look, look, you, you can say that. I can't. They might <laughs> find me, you know? <laughs> it's two, it's two months ago, they're find you. You never know. <laughs> man, look, hey. hey dude. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Daniel, how important will the uh, lob attack be against the Thunder team? Uh, it'll be real important. Just keeping our spacing and just, you know, getting downhill. I would say they pack the paint a lot with this team that we're going to go play, and we just got to make sure we find, make the right decisions down the stretch to kind of like, you know, keep us from having turnovers, keep us poised, and really just help us I find some type of way to just help us execute consistently down the stretch. Daniel, how much concentration has there been on being strong with the ball against these guys because they force more turnovers than mm -hmm. anybody else? Hundred percent. Like that's just like I would say that's kinda like the first thing that was said today. You know, they swipe at the ball all the time, whether you're a big or a small. If you're going to if you're going into the paint, you better go in there and make sure you finish. <laughs> or you just make sure you just, you know, redrive and throw it out to anybody that's out on the perimeter to be ready to shoot. Because at the end of the day, trying to make sure we take care of the ball is kinda like our main goal. Just with a team like this, you know, they they ranked high in steals with at least I would say what maybe three, four players on their team. You know, so we just have to make sure that we kind of like take care of everything when it comes to just like our execution offensively. What would you say is the one thing you learned from that Clipper series that you can take into the series against OKC? Just physicality at the end of the day and just being early, making sure guys hear us. Because I know it's going to be real crazy going into this OKC crowd. You know, it's going to be real loud. So we got we just got to make sure when it comes to our principles that we know at the end of the day, because there's going to be a lot of coverage. It's probably going to get messed up because of the simple fact that they're not going to be able to hear us on the backside. Um, but in all honesty, just the physicality and the energy. They're going to come out head full of steam. They had a great series last series against the Pelicans. So, you know, they got a chip on their shoulder for sure. So they're going to come out swinging and we got to do the same thing. You know, Shea's obviously not going to be your primary matchup, but mm -hmm. rim protection is critical against mm -hmm. a guy like that. What do you guys need to do to, to keep him from getting in the groove? Uh, to really just be as vertical as possible consistently, don't fall for pump fakes, and stay out of foul trouble, in all honesty. You know, trying to do our best. At the end of the day, trying to protect the basket of guys that predominantly always go down to the basket trying to finish around the rim. That's just like our main thing. Just staying poised and just staying together. Communication is key. What's the impact of being without Maxi, and what does that mean for what you need to do? 
Um, I mean, it just it just gives everybody else the opportunity to step up in his place and just kind of like pick up where he left off. You know, he he went down tough. It was a, it's a it's really just tough to just even think about it in all honesty because you know the last two games of the Clipper series he was real big, most definitely, and to just really just pick up where he left off. We just have to keep that energy into how he impacted the game. That's uh, then the last two games of that series for sure. How much stock do you guys put in the fact that the one game that Luka and Kyrie both played against this team, you guys beat them by 35? Uh, I don't think anybody, I, in all honesty, I don't think anybody has really even said anything about it. That really, was their you first know. Game. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. What's crazy is, you know, we just like, we just put the clips together and just really just find ways to just implement what their tendencies are and just find ways to just kind of like, prevent that in all honesty, try to be consistent and just trying to kind of like piggyback off of what we did when we won against them um, in the past and just implement that into these next few games that we got against them. So when everybody's talking about like the, the, the change that the team made after the trade deadline, they talk about, mm -hmm. you know, the trades for, for you and for PJ and mm -hmm. Uh, you those two names get put together so much that it's like I think we almost forget that you guys are on completely different. Teams. Yeah, well, I think we started looking like too. You know, <laughs> <laughs> so so obviously like you were team based before the deadline, but um, but I'm I'm curious, is there any sort of bond or, or anything that developed between you guys both coming into the same situation and experiencing the same turnaround, mm. uh, not being a part of it from the beginning of the season? Um, well, uh, with me and PJ, we played against each other during AAU ball all the time. He was on Team Penny. I was with the Arkansas Wings. So I had a fair amount of times where I was always, I would say, in the same gym as him majority of the time. So, you know, I, I would say we kind of, I would say, somewhat created a bond because he went to Kentucky. I went to Arkansas. We was all, like I said, we was always in the same gym at one point in time throughout our career. So just being on the same team now is just like, you know, it was like, I can't even think of the phrase of it. We'll come back to it, but <laughs> but it's just I would say you know I wouldn't say it's destined, but it was at pretty much the right time. In all honesty, you know we both were put in a position to be able to take that next step forward in our career, and we just you know took advantage of that and just worked hard and just was ready for that. I would say next step, you know, it's always one door closes and another door opens. And was there any help? Like like did you guys kind of as you were trying to figure out, pick up the schemes, you mm -hmm. know, especially the first few weeks? Was mm -hmm. you know was it? Did you guys kind of bounce stuff off each other? Was there any ability to kind of help each other out in that mm, way? Yeah. In some, in some instances, yes, because, you know, when we first got here, they got us in the gym. They taught us all the schemes, the calls, the plays, so on and so forth. And then if one was confused, we always helped each other out at the end of the day, or we just asked questions, you know. no, Pretty much no question is the worst question. Danielle, I heard, I heard you say that, you know, OKC okay, is a young and scrappy team, but I'm also mm -hmm. hearing how much you guys are preparing for them. What does it say about the respect level that you guys have for your opponent, knowing that they're a little bit younger? I mean, at the end of the day, they're an NBA team, and they're one of the top NBA teams this season. So we just have to, for sure, just come out and be ready for a dog fight, you know, because I'm pretty sure they're going to be doing all the dog barking and stuff once we get there at the end of the day. So, you know, we just have to be ready to come out and just be ready to go blow for blow. It, uh, Play by play, we just have to just come out and just play with just like that edge to just come out and try to win basketball games. Oh, so let's just talk about medical. Uh, Luca's probable right knee sprain. Uh, Maxie's out. Uh, Hardaway's available. Omax is out. And Fudge is out. Congratulations on the contract. Thanks. Tell us a little bit about it. Then. <laughs> yeah, uh, I got a new deal. That's about it. Uh, <laughs> I'm very thankful for uh, Patrick and uh, Nico f and uh, to be able to uh, have a new deal uh, going forward. Um, truly believe, you know, Patrick and Nico are, are building a championship team and I'm happy to be a part of it. What does that mean to you that they saw the, the job that you've done and they appreciate it and they reward you accordingly? Yeah, it means a lot. Um, the, the work uh, that, you know, the coaching staff and the players are putting in, um, you know, means a lot, and uh, and hopefully, they saw that, and uh, you know, through the through the good and through the stuff that we had to get better at, um, you know, we're, this is work in progress. Uh, this is a, a very talented team, um, and so uh, to be a part of it, I'm I'm very blessed. Over the past three years, what are you proud that you've instilled in in, in this team? Uh, probably this the you know calmness, uh, you know development and uh, you know on and off the floor um, a winning mindset uh, just you know those those couple things probably.
you, you said calmness. It was a kind of a chaotic ending last year. How do you think that your character traits kind of helped you and the club get through that and, and get to this point here? Yeah, I think uh, last year we learned a lot about character, um, about the team. Um, there was a couple pivots there that late in the season, and um, it, it turned out to be you know the right thing. Um, at the time, um, everyone had their opinion, but you know understanding what the plan is uh, internally, I thought we executed the plan, and uh, and we were thankful to get. Omax and, and lively, you know, out of that plan. So, um, but being calm and not, you know, what others say uh, turned out to be the right thing. Coach, with this contract, what's your message to Mavericks fans now that this come to fruition? Yeah, I think we're, we're trying to win a championship, and so uh, you know we have an opportunity. We're playing a very talented team in Oklahoma City. Uh, but uh, understanding that the foundation is being built and, uh, you know, our, our ultimate goal is to win a championship. And hopefully we can do that here in the next three years. When you're prepared to, for a guy like Shea Gillis Alexander, I know um, defensively in the Clippers series, you had Derrick Jones Jr. on Paul George. Do you see a similar effect that he can have, I guess, on that end, facing their top perimeter player? Yeah, Shea's, he's in, you know, up for MVP. Um, He's one of the best young players in this league, and so he puts a lot of pressure on your defense, and everyone's going to get a chance to guard him. Uh, just understand we're coming out of a series uh, with Paul George and Harden, uh, who can you know flat out score the ball. So hopefully we can have some carryover uh, from the defensive side uh, to just try to make it tough on on uh, on Shea and those guys. Uh, they're going to make tough shots. Uh, our our theory is to try to make them take tough shots and hopefully that we can uh, get them to miss them. All the uh, old guard superstars have been sent home except for one. What, what's the value that Kyrie brings with his experience to this team? Uh, yeah, I think wis wisdom and experience, uh, you know, understanding what it means this time of the year. Uh, again, there's no panic. There's calmness. Uh, he's uh, under control. Uh, his tone when he speaks to the team uh, is confident. And so uh, it's great to have someone like that uh, in, in your locker room this time of the year. What's the challenge with Chet on both ends of the floor for you guys? Yeah, Chet uh, can step out and shoot the three. He can put it on the floor. Uh, he can finish. He can shoot, you know, so uh, and also pass. He has a total package, and then defensively, you, you got to account for him. He's gonna if he's at the rim, he has a great chance of blocking the shot or changing the shot. So, understand when uh, you're gonna try to challenge him, he he wins most of those battles. So uh, again, he can change the game on the defensive end and on the offensive end. Jason, you, you guys definitely got bigger after the, the trade deadline, but but even since the trade deadline, offensive rebounding isn't something that um, you you guys your stats were way up in, in the league about. Do you feel like that's a strength, especially going against a team that's that's chosen to to field a smaller lineup? Do you think it's something that that for certain matchups and situations you you guys are able to turn on as as a weapon for you? Yeah, at this time of year, if you can get second or third opportunities, that that helps. Uh, you know, and we're going to need that uh, against Oklahoma City uh, is to be able to get second or third opportunities. Just understanding uh, they can be small at times, so uh, our bigs uh, and our our smalls. Uh, have to try to get you know offensive rebounds to give us a second or third opportunity if if we want to win this series. We talked about Kyrie's experience, um, but how much will experience overall play a factor in this series, especially with OKC being so young? Oh, what was that? I didn't I didn't hear the first part. What was that? We talked about Kyrie's experience yeah. individually, but how much will experience play overall? Yeah, ex experience uh, comes into play if you if you put in that situation. Uh, uh, everybody's going to talk about their young team. Uh, but it's basketball. They know how to play. They're the number one uh, team in the West. Uh, they have Coach of the Year and Mark. And so, uh, understanding they've been experienced, they've been through, they've they've been together for some time now. So, uh, just understanding uh, until you can put them into a experienced situation, uh, they're going to play basketball. They're going to play the way that they've been playing all season. So, our job is to try to hopefully uh, put them in a, a, a position. That experience does come to play, comes into play. 
Jason, no one knows your career like as well as you do, but when you have moments with the contract extension, do you give yourself time to reflect on how you how far you've gotten? Yeah, I don't have no I don't have, after the season maybe. Okay. And and then and then there's always stuff to do after the season. So uh, again, uh, I'm I'm very uh, humble and thankful for this opportunity with the Mavs. Uh, to uh, try to win a championship. But again, like I told the players this morning, uh, I thank them for this opportunity because it's them that helped uh, get this deal. Um, the development, um, being able to win, um, and then also having the opportunity to win a championship. So I'm very thankful for that. What do you think makes Lou Dort a good defender? Uh, he plays hard at all times. Lou Dort is uh, he's one that's gonna compete um, when he's on the floor. Um, that's how he came in the league, and that's how you know he's still playing. And he's probably gonna, uh, until he leaves the league, he's going to play hard. And so he understands uh, his defense is, has, has caused a problem in this league. Uh, he plays hard f for uh, the time that he's out on the floor. Uh, he knows no other way, so he causes a problem on the defensive end. Losing Maxi, but getting hopefully getting Tim back. What? How do you kind of view that and on the personnel front and how important is Tim to try to step in there with Maxie out? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, unfortunate to lose Maxie. Maxie was playing well uh, for us uh, defensively and offensively. Uh, I think he was our best three-point shooter. Um, but looking at uh, getting Timmy back is, is a good thing. and We're going to need Timmy uh, coming off the bench to be able to give us some offense, but also his experience of being in the playoffs uh, is going to come into play and we're going to need that experience on the floor especially here with the first two games on the road coach speaking of tim how would you say he and luke have progressed from an injury standpoint over the past few days uh, they've been great they look great um they look like they're ready to go